Hello, I'm Chris. Some learner drivers search for it, and some know it already. What exactly is the secret to passing the UK driving test? Well, if you promise not to repeat it to anyone else, I'll tell you. Actually, there isn't a secret. There never has been any. To pass a driving test just takes hard work, practice, determination and most importantly experience on the road. To give you a better chance of passing your driving test though, I'm going to give you my top 5 tips. Tip number 1. Anticipate what will and might happen next and plan ahead. Driving is unpredictable and you never know what's around the next corner, which also makes the driving test unpredictable. But there are certain things that you can expect and you shouldn't be surprised by, such as pedestrians wanting to cross at pedestrian crossings. Especially look out for zebra crossings as they're not controlled by traffic lights. Try not to just think about what you need to deal with right now, but also what's next, such as this zebra crossing. Not only do I need to creep out to get a better view when it's safe, but I also need to scan both sides of the crossing carefully for pedestrians. You might have heard of someone failing their driving test before because a car came out of nowhere and they didn't brake in time. Believe it or not, but cars don't come out of nowhere. You just need to be prepared and don't drive as if you're the only car on the road. If you can't see round a corner, then approach it slowly, ready for the worst, such as a bin lorry. At a closed junction where you can't see very well, emerge carefully, observe properly and don't assume it's clear. In fact, always expect the worst. Effective observations are so important because your life or somebody else's life could depend on it. When meeting oncoming traffic, don't just think about the space you need to go into, but how are you going to get back out too? Constantly try to think and be prepared for what's next. Not only have I got to think about what these lorries might be hiding from my view, but also the mini roundabout and what's after the roundabout. If I was driving faster expecting a clear road, then I would have had a problem and probably would have had to reverse. Always plan ahead and expect the worst. Keep up your awareness and look out for any potential hazards. Signs and road markings are all there to help you. Here I can see no entry signs and the road markings show that I have to turn right. It takes a lot of concentration and awareness to be a good safe driver on the road. Plan ahead for what might happen next and try to be ready for anything. Take in all the information that's around you, including what you see in your mirrors, and keep scanning the area ahead. Look well ahead and try to spot signs early so that you have time to think and react. All it takes is to miss these signs and road markings and you could end up driving over the speed limit or even driving too slow if the speed limit raises and it's safe to drive faster but you haven't noticed. If you're unsure what the speed limit is, then look out for smaller repeater signs. I'm anticipating that the bus could stop at the next bus stop. Has anybody pressed the button at the pedestrian crossing? Is it safe to go around the bus? Any pedestrians near the front of it? Plan for what might and will happen next. In fact, it's so important to keep anticipating and planning that I can promise that as soon as you stop doing it, mistakes will start to happen. You've probably got the message by now how vital it is to plan ahead. 
but it's worth reminding you that regular checks of your mirrors is essential so that you know what's going on behind and react safely to what you see. It's also important to know when to have a quick sideways glance into the blind spots, for example before changing lanes. Tip number two. Don't assume you failed your driving test. You might make a mistake that totally puts you off, such as stalling when pulling up. Why did I do that? I don't normally stall. I've definitely failed for this. I'm going to have to book another test, pay loads more money. I can't believe it. What's the point in continuing? I know I failed anyway. You carry on with the test, dwelling on what you think was a big mistake, only to make more serious mistakes as you're still thinking about what just happened and aren't concentrating. The mistakes start to snowball and you just want to go home. The driving examiner sees it quite differently. The examiner noticed you stalled and restarted the car, but there wasn't any actual or potential danger and you didn't affect any other road users. So you haven't failed, but you might get a driving fault or a minor as they're commonly called. If you do make a mistake on the driving test, then forget about it for now. Recover from it, think about what's next, and just concentrate on your driving. There's no point dwelling on mistakes, and definitely don't think you failed or give up during the test because what you think was a serious mistake could be a driving fault to the examiner. Tip number three. Don't be distracted by what the examiner is writing. The examiner will have the driving test results sheet on their lap and they might occasionally write things, but don't be tempted to have a peek at what they've written as it could distract you from your main job, which is to drive at your best. The examiner doesn't always write bad things, so stay focused and positive. The examiner might also chat to you when there's not much going on, which might help you feel more relaxed. But remember to also stay focused on your driving. This can be a bit more challenging, especially if the weather is bad, or there's something else distracting going on. Tip number four, don't assume. Don't assume the road you're still on has a 40 mile per hour speed limit, for example, or to go ahead at the roundabout, you'll always need the left hand lane, or you can never drive in bus lanes. Going back to tip number one, plan ahead and look out for road signs and markings. The driving examiner isn't there to trick you or catch you out. All the information is there. It's just up to you to see it. If you don't and something serious happens, then unfortunately you'll fail your driving test and have to come back as you'll need more practice and experience. Tip number five, try to have an early night before the day of your driving test. Waking up and feeling tired won't help your concentration levels and will put you at a serious disadvantage. There's obviously more to driving than just these tips, but I really hope they help. If you're looking for tips on how to do each of the maneuvers, then have a look at our other videos, as you might find out something you didn't know. Unfortunately, there isn't a shortcut or magic way to pass the driving test. For the best chance of passing, it's simple. Just practice lots, build up your experience on the road, and learn from any mistakes. Some people go for the driving test when they're not really ready. If you're constantly making serious or dangerous mistakes during your driving lessons, or failing mock driving tests in a big way, then you're probably not really ready for the driving test, or for driving on your own yet. Consider delaying the test and get some more practice, but don't go for the experience. Mock driving tests are good for that and they're cheaper than the real test. 
go for the driving test because you feel confident. And not only have you proven to your instructor that you have the skills for driving safely, but also to yourself. When you begin your driving test, stay calm. Remember that you just need to show one more person what a safe driver you are. And most importantly, believe in yourself. Thanks a lot for watching our video. If you have your driving test coming up soon, then good luck. Please subscribe for our latest videos. Keep safe on the road and see you on the next video.